So for years and years, I have been a student of the housing market and trying to understand based upon behaviors of consumers, which you have your finger on the pulse of, based on behaviors of consumers, what can we expect to happen next in the housing market? And I've developed this pendulum graphic to illustrate the way the market changes and how people behave that then causes the market to change. So you're probably starting to pick up on stories running around. This is now May um, 2022. And we've been watching closely for this idea that, you know, we have a seller's market and a buyer's market in the overall pendulum. And we have had a pretty extreme seller's market over the last, most of a decade, but it's gotten very extreme in the last couple of years. You know the drill. And so the question always is, what are the behavioral patterns of buyers and sellers that create this situation? So demand over the top, inventory winds up being low because the houses are all just getting bought, right? And it's always worth pointing out that you don't want to conflate supply with inventory. Supply is how many houses come on the market. Inventory is how many houses are on the market at any given time. And this is important because all of 2021, the stories of no inventory, no inventory, no inventory, had a deflating effect on a lot of real estate people because why go out and try when there's nothing to sell, right? When the truth is there's a lot of houses to sell. It was a historically very strong year of supply of houses. It just was a very tight year in terms of how many houses were in inventory because the demand was so over the top that it completely outstripped what was actually a pretty good supply year. But if you read the tea leaves wrong, it could demoralize you, take away your energy, and that's never a good thing if the market is actually pretty ripe to make money, but you just have to be able to change your tactics to work in whatever the environment calls for. So we had this situation, high, low, bidding wars, yup, transaction count was high, yes. Sales prices are rising, of course, and the question is, when is it going to shift back? This is what I've been obsessing over, and so you might have heard me ask, are you seeing any changes in the behavior or the attitudes of buyers? Because when the prices go up too high and the buyers begin to resist, that's when things start to shift. Okay, so you picture the sellers, ha, 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 they're running up the hill, rising, you know, increasing their asking prices, being more and more um, in the catbird seat, so to speak, in the negotiation. Like, no, you can't inspect my house, and no, I can't let you get a mortgage. You need to pay cash, and you need to pay cash tomorrow without seeing it. Um, that's a little, a little crazy, right? But it's been happening all over the country. So eventually, the buyers say enough is enough. I'm just not going anymore. Uh, not going any higher. That asking price is ridiculous. I'm not even going to go look at it. And then this standoff ensues. And that's what you start to watch for. When does the I know that buyers have been annoyed for some time, but when does annoyance become forget it, I'm out of here, right? I'm just not going to go there. When does that start to show signs of a change in the attitude of buyers? Because the standoff is where the buyers say, nope. I'm just not going any higher, but the sellers are still running up the hill. Ha, 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 ha. I'm in the catbird seat. Eventually, they look behind him, and there's nobody following him anymore. <clears throat> and what begins to happen then, after the standoff, is the shift back towards a more balanced market looks like demand declining. Now, it's worth saying demand could decline quite a bit right now, and we could still have super high demand. So I'm not saying demand evaporating. We are not going towards a buyer's market right now. The question is, are we going towards a more balanced market? And it looks like it. And by the way, the media is picking up on it, but I'm proud to say that you told me this months ago and I started sharing this information months ago. So our prediction of the market shifting predates the media experts by you know most of a quarter at this point. But now everybody's starting to agree that things are changing. Demand is declining, but what really is happening is demand at those prices is declining. Demand is saying, you know, no way. You saw the standoff, right? Buyers aren't going to go any further. So the transaction count is going to necessarily decline. Uh, inventory is going to necessarily begin to increase. So ask yourself, are you seeing houses that are getting more than no days on market, right? Are you seeing houses that aren't getting bidding wars on the first weekend? And the answer across the country has been, yeah, we're seeing a lot of examples of that. Just these subtle changes where the sellers have gone a little bit too far and the buyers are now starting to speak in unison that we're not going to continue this way. So inventory acc accumulates. More houses stay on the market for a little bit longer. What eventually happens is the sellers realize they overplayed their hand and they capitulate and they drop their asking prices. Doesn't mean home prices are going to decline overall because the demand, I think, is still going to outstrip the supply, just not as dramatically as before. 
That's where the shift is. It, it, it feels like it's happening right now. Now, there's a lot of experts, economists and so forth, who are not going to know this until it happens. It closed until these attitudes of buyers and sellers reflect in negotiations, reflect in contracts, reflect in closings, get recorded with the county clerk, and then end up in their data set. And they'll be sitting there looking at this in October going, huh, how does this reconcile with what buyers and sellers are doing today? And the answer is, it doesn't. It reconciles in October with what buyers and sellers are doing today, right? And last month. The October activity is going to show up in February in their data. So always know that they're working at a massive disadvantage because they don't have you informing them of what's actually happening between the ears of buyers and sellers out in the marketplace. So eventually sellers capitulate and they begin to drop their asking prices. Sales prices will then flatten out. You know, the, the rate of increase will, will slow. Maybe it'll go flat in some places. It may give back a little bit, but nothing like a bubble bursting uh, only maybe a few micro markets that could have that problem. And I, I'm not willing to highlight any of those at this point because I just think the popularity of houses is just over the top right now. And so that's real. Okay. So what's the point? The point is for you, the market is ripe out there. Okay. You're going to see and keep watching this channel, follow this channel because I've got a lot of success stories rolling in. A lot of people, you're reaching out to your sphere and boom, you're striking gold. Right, you're calling somebody that you haven't talked to in a while, and they're saying, "Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm thinking about selling my house," because the seller's attitude, the people who are not on the market, are starting to get the winds um, that they may have reached the peak, they may have passed the peak. So if they've been sitting on the sidelines waiting for the opportunity to sell at the peak, now might be it. There's also folks that have been waiting on the sidelines because they think there's nothing to buy. Well, as they see stories about inventory increasing. Sellers are starting to realize they rode this thing all the way to the peak. They're also starting to realize that they don't have to be afraid of finding a place to buy because there's inventory out there now, or they're starting to get a sense there will be. And then third, they better get on it because whatever price they may save, they're going to spend more because their interest rate is going to be high. That dimension of the, the urgency because of mortgage rates actually works in our favor. What's the point? The point is this market is going to be very hospitable to those real estate agents that stay oriented towards action. Your sphere is waiting to hear from you. This is news you can share with them. Take this video, put it out, right? Share this with consumers. I'm a legit expert on this, right? So, and I'm on your team. So take it for what it's worth that you've got some real hands-on, long-term experience at reading the housing market, both in the data, but most importantly, in the attitudes and behaviors of consumers. Um, that I know where this is going right now because it's already going there, it's already there, and that is that inventory is going to increase and supply is going to increase this summer. So get out there with that belief, right? Like who wants to go out and start, I always use the analogy of an orchard, right? Who wants to go out trying to pick apples in an orchard when you know they've all fallen off the trees? There's no energy behind that activity, right? But if you know it's time, they're ripe, you see images of the, the apple trees that are just covered in beautiful red apples, that makes you get up in the morning with a lot of optimism to get out there and start picking. The market is ripe, it's waiting for you. Look around on this network. I'll probably put some video at the end of what I'm about to say right now, but look around for videos of the overwhelming volume of success stories that are happening all over Caldwell Banker based on one simple fact, and that is agents are making calls to their past customers, checking in with them, finding out they wanna sell something. All right, good luck, have a great weekend. Sure enough, the guy who opened up the gym uh, the old president of Barnes and Noble and him and all of his staff just moved to the area uh, and are hoping to buy houses. I went to my car shop that does the inspections for me and I've known the owner for 20 years or something. He came out and he immediately said, were your ears burning this weekend? We were talking about you. I uh, called my SOI slash past client. He told me about his sister, newlywed sister and brother-in-law that they're looking to sell their condo. It turns out his wife is ready to move, ready to find the next forever house. So there's two, two sales right there. And then he said, and my parents are ready to move and her parents are ready to move. Re-engaged and making those phone calls to my, uh, my friends, my family, my, my sphere of influence. And with these phone calls, I was able to set three appointments last week. Um, those appointments that I set all called me back before I even got to the appointment date and told me that they wanted to list a, a property for sale. Um, two of them are investment properties. Another one is a property that they have that they personally live in. 
And uh, I wouldn't have got that business if I wasn't making my phone calls, if I wasn't in the closer club and getting re-engaged and trusting the process of, uh, of what we're supposed to do on a daily basis. So make those phone calls, get your appointments and, and get your unfair share of the business.